hey, it's September 10th, and I thought I'd go through a little um, sort of dry run on what you might expect if, um, if I'm elected to counselor for Ward 5, and um, one of my promises is to keep you updated so that you can easily find information about what's going on around town. So I was at the regular council meeting this morning and uh, I thought I'd go over a few of the things that happened. I'm not going to go into huge detail on this one. It was a very long meeting. Um, started at 10 and I think I got home at about 1.30. So um, there was lots going on. Uh, the first one was a presentation to um, Victoria. Victoria McDonald. Um, she was a participant in the um, National Summer Games and uh, came home with a few gold medals. Uh, this is part of the uh, qualifiers for the Special Olympics. Um, I believe the next time it happens. I didn't look that up. Um, she won gold for the 25 meter breaststroke, the 25 meter freestyle, the 50 meter freestyle and she also participated in the 100 meter medley which she came in fifth for and fourth in both the 50 meter breaststroke and the 25 meter backstroke. So she was presented with um, a certificate from Mayor Pat Malloy. She was also uh, on behalf of the Township of Uxbridge. She was also part uh, presented with a certificate from our MP Jennifer O'Connell and uh, also presented with another certificate um, and a nice little note from our MPP um, Peter Bethan Flaudy. I probably pronounced that wrong. Um, then there was a presentation to Tis Tish McDonald. Um, everybody in town knows who she is. She's very involved with um, youth and the veterans and is uh, responsible for um, putting the two of them together. Um, she is very, very valued in the community for her volunteer efforts and she was presented with a beautiful um, award for from the Governor General for volunteerism. Um, then there was a presentation from uh, Elizabeth Convery and Gail Brown regarding the Orange Shirt Day Committee. I'll put a picture of the poster in the comments for that and um, it was just based on Every Child Matters. Um, they're having a community church service and um, some events at Elgin Park with um, the Ashton Young Singers and Dancers, which will have a presentation of history and artifacts and um, the performance on the big drum, which should be fantastic. Um, it all has a lot to do with um, the children who survived um, being in the residential schools on uh, reserves and the effects of that. Um, so it is a really good cause. So if you can make it out or if you can support by buying an orange shirt, um, that would really help out their cause. I'll put all the information for that uh, in the links. Um, really exciting news about the corner of Victoria and Brock. We all know the one, the one that's been the big hole forever. Um, according to the planning department, uh, they have been issued a foundation permit and work will be starting this week. We'll have to see if they keep their word on that because it was supposed to start last month and here we are in September and we still haven't seen anything happen. So um, as far as what we can expect, uh, they have information that the dem demolition will start Friday. Um, they'll be removing some of the uh, interior walls from the uh, foundation and then um, using what is remaining to build the rest of the building. So they've only been issued a foundation permit at this point. So that gets them up to ground level. I also asked Brian if there was uh, any possibility of 
moving the fence back um, anybody who has come up to that intersection picking their kids up from school or anything else like that knows that it is extremely difficult um, to get good visibility when you're trying to pull out from Victoria onto Brock so that was addressed with the builder and um, he will make sure to point that out again and hopefully that will be addressed as soon as possible um, after they've done after they're done um, cleaning up the area and uh, and doing the demolition needed in the um, in the uh, interior wall portion of the foundation so that's super exciting news he said we can expect it to be backfilled leveled and capped by the end of November hopefully um, then we had uh, Mike McDonald and Phil Alexander of the Expert Firefighters Association um, they were in updating us on uh, the firefighter memorial that they would like to have installed at the new fire hall um, this will just have um, plaques and uh, dedications to firefighters that we've lost um, in Uxbridge. So that is, um, that's a great thing for uh, honoring the, the men that we've lost and women, but we haven't lost any women yet due to firefighting. Um, then there was um, a short discussion about uh, um, cannabis sales. Um, the AMO has recommended that um, we take a really good look at whether we want to um, allow them in our municipality. Uh, some of the issues with um, what Doug Ford is supporting and recommending in regards to uh, retail sales similar to the LCBO where it's government controlled. Um, he's now sort of backpedaled on that and said that it would be um, better if we did it in a private sale sort of way which can open up all sorts of possibilities that many of us don't even want to think about. Um, I'm not sure where I stand on this personally. I don't oppose to cannabis use but um, I think that it does need to be closely monitored um, like anything else like alcohol or, um, or tobacco. Um, just so it doesn't get in the wrong hands or, you know, be abused or whatever. Um, so I'll, I'll post information to all this stuff in, uh, in the links as well. Um, there was also a letter from a resident on Colby Road uh, concerning the Fields of Uxbridge master plan. Um, residents that back onto the uh, Kennedy Fields are worried about the way the master plan is um, laid out and where the baseball fields are proposed to go and light pollution into their properties. Um, of course, this is a very valid concern. Um, I'll post a link to the uh, letter that he submitted. It was uh, basically put uh, accepted for information and they'll take a second look at the master plan and make sure that they're laying things out um, in a good design that minimizes that sort of issue for area residents. Um, Donlan Lane in uh, Barton Farms was also officially declared surplus lands. Um, there's a procedure that it needs to go through in order to be declared surplus um, before it can actually be blocked off for Harema to be re realigned and then um, and then potentially sold off or not sold off. There will be a special public meeting on September 24th. I think it was either at 6.30 or 7 o'clock, but I didn't catch that because I was writing other things down. And, um, but it will be posted on the township website uh, and advertised in the paper as well. Um, that is part of the process that they need to actually publish um, a notice that it's been declared surplus and then there are steps they take from there to either um, sell it off or repurpose it for something else. Um, there was also a report to council regarding uh, a an Ontario Trillium grant um, that would be put to use for putting in um, lights, uh, parking and pathways at the historical center. Uh, if anybody has been up there, you know that it's all gravel, gravel uh, 
driveway, gravel parking lot, gravel pathways, and they want to make it more accessible for those who can't necessarily walk. Um, so the grant, I'm not, I didn't catch whether it actually was um, awarded or not, uh, but the grant, if successful, uh, will pay to pave approximately 72% of the pass, plus a few other little small areas, and they would like to um, expand the project to include paving of the main parking lot, um, installation of additional lighting and security cameras. Um, you'll also find in there um, the South Balsam Playground. There was a report put in by Bob Ferguson. Um, the uh, current equipment has um, reached its, ex its expected uh, life expectancy, <laughs> reached the end of its life expectancy. Um, I believe it was around 20 years old and uh, he put in a report um, that entailed uh, submitting a proposal or submitting, you know, a $40,000 sort of bid to a few different companies to see what they would come back with, um, what they could build for that. Um, it was awarded to a company for um, $26,899 and uh, it will be recommended for purchase for this. Um, it's been put through to, um, I believe it was the 2019 budget for the Parks and Rec and um, they are also going to relocate the park as well to the Hodgson's Parkette. Um, there was some issues with uh, the old location near the railway and um, pond with vandalism and that sort of thing. So this is in a, in a better lit, um, easier area to access. So hopefully that will um, help with its use as well. Um, then we have uh, the residents around Harema soccer fields um, were concerned with some vandalism and, uh, and inappropriate driving, we'll call it, um, in the parking lot. Um, they were uh, recommended to put in either a gate or a camera system um, and close the gate after hours, which I didn't think was really a great idea. Thankfully, um, the Parks and Rec management didn't think that was a great idea either um, because it needs to be left accessible in terms of an emergency. So um, they have recommended that they install a permanent camera system and they figure they can do that for under $5,000. Um, it will go come out of the uh, 2018 vandalism budget and the remaining, if necessary, will come out of the Parks and Rec budget for this year. So that's great um, for those area residents and hopefully that will help curb the issue. And if it doesn't, at least we've got them on camera. I hope they're smiling. Um, there was a report put through for um, streetlight installation and repair. Now, there was some discussion about that being on Bolton and Carmody Lane, but I didn't actually find any uh, location details in the agenda. Um, I'd have to go back and find the actual tender for that. So I believe at least those two streets will be getting some, some updating and repair for their streetlights. Um, outside of that, I'm not sure what's happening with the, uh, with the rest of them that need repairing. I'm sure there are some. Um, there was a port, a report put in from um, uh, Ingrid Svelness, the CAO, um, just reserving space for a 150 person facility for uh, a long term care uh, facility. The, um, there is talk of one coming so that we can either upgrade reach view or replace it 
Um, many people know that it's below ministry standards and, and it needs to be either replaced or, or um, brought up to standards. So they have put in the reserves for the sewage treatment, um, you know, water treatment stuff, uh, 150 people um, so that that is there for a little while while, um, you know, the people in charge of that get everything sorted out and get that project underway. Um, Jack Ballinger brought up a good point that we should have a time limit on this reservation so that it doesn't get sort of stuck in limbo forever while we're waiting for um, the planning process to go through or just, you know, will people sit on their butts and and come up with something else just in case something else more important comes up in the meantime that we need that capacity for. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what happened with that recommendation, but um, I thought it was a very good point. Um, I think for now that was kind of it. I'll put a link to the agenda which contains all the documents um, that I talked about in there. Uh, if you've never gone through the agenda before, there'll be a cover page of the minutes and it will tell you um, what the correspondence was or the report and what page it's on. So if that's all you're worried about looking at, then you can just scroll through the document, which is a PDF, um, until you get to that page and actually you know, check the details on that. So um, I hope that helps keep you up to date. And this was a little bit longer than I uh, had anticipated it would be. But um, that's sort of the kind of thing that I'm uh, looking at doing um, if you honor me with the pleasure of being your Ward 5 counselor. So uh, hopefully we'll see you again. And don't forget about the All Candidates meeting tonight, September 10th seven o'clock at the um, community center. Bye.